Hi guys, Cliff here with Flamebug Bees and Woodworks. We're back to you with another video. This time, we're going to do a three-part series on what you need to do in the winter time to winterize your beehives. Uh, in our experience, there's three main reasons that bees die or hives die over the winter. Uh, the first one is starvation. Uh, the second one is going into winter with a high mite load. And the third one is moisture in the hive. So we've got something for you guys that's going to take care of each of these issues. This is the first video in that series, and that's how to make candy boards for your beehives as an emergency food source over the winter. Stay with us. The next two videos will be coming out, both of which will come out within the next week. Uh, so that'll give you guys three videos within seven days and, uh, and teach you guys three different skills that you need to make sure your hives over winter properly. Anyway, you can visit funnybugbeesandwoodworks.com. Uh, check out our full line of beekeeping products, hives, um, hive components, anything you guys need, you should be able to find there. So anyway, let's get down to work. Candy board, here we go. All right guys, this project can be made from scrap, which is what we'll be doing. These are the materials you're gonna need. You're gonna need two pieces of lumber, the width of whatever size hive you're using. So for eight frame, three, uh, 13 and three quarters, for 10 frames, 16 and a quarter, and you're going to need two other pieces of scrap that are at least 19 and a half or so so you can trim them to length. These are going to finalize, uh, be a finalized dimension of 19 and 1 8. And they need to be at least three inches, all, all four of these need to be at least three inches across the face because we're going to trim them down to three inches. So what we'll go ahead and do now is make the cuts, these four cuts on these four pieces of scrap. We'll get them cut all down to size. Uh, the sizes will be down in the description for you of what you're going to need, but we'll go ahead and get these cut now. Quick safety announcement, as always, you guys don't see me wearing them because of the shot angles. Never work on any of your power equipment without safety glasses, hearing protection, a push stick, or a push block. You'll also notice that I don't have the blade guard on my blade, and the only reason that is is for visual clarity so you guys can see the cuts better. I do not recommend removing your blade guard. I recommend keeping it on your saw at all times. Let's get to making the cuts. Alright guys and gals, what you should end up with is four pieces of lumber ripped to three inches wide, which is exactly what we have. Four of those. Now we'll cut them to length. Alright guys, for our longer two pieces, for our long sides, today what we're going to do is use a simple butt joint. These do not have to carry very much weight and glue and nails in a simple butt joint is the easiest way to do this. Uh, you can use a miter joint or you can use a, a rabbit joint if you like. But since we are going to be using a butt joint, our long pieces need to be 18 and 3 eighths inches long. So that's what I'm going to cut them to. Our next cut is for our short sides. You cut your short sides to the length of whatever size hive you're making. Uh, the candy board for. Uh, for this particular one I'm making an 8 frame so I'm going to set <clears throat> the length of the short pieces to 13 and 3 quarters because that's the outside dimension of an 8 frame hive. Alright all of our cuts are made. <clears throat> what we've got is Two pieces of lumber that are three inches wide by 13 and three quarters inches long. These are for an eight frame hive. And we have two pieces of lumber that are three inches wide and 18 and three eighths inches long. Um, and the reason for that is we're going to use a simple butt joint. So all you do is subtract the thickness of your short pieces from 19 and seven eighths, which is the length of an eight, of a, of an eight frame or 10 frame for that matter hive. And so when we add these butt joints together, we'll end up with 19 and 7 eighths inches. So let's go ahead and get this put together, and then we'll get the hardware cloth put on it, and we'll show you how to use it with chimneys. For this project, I'm going to be using 
two inch 18 gauge nails. <clears throat> you guys can use anything you like. It doesn't need to be much glue and small nails are all you need to hold this together. So the first thing we're going to do is take a long side and a short side and we're going to put them together, glue and nail them. The short side needs to be on the outside of the long side. You do not want to put the long side on the outside of the short side. So make sure that the short side goes on the end of the long side. Just add glue and nail it. Line your edges up so they're nice and smooth. Put a nail in it. Get everything lined up square and then nail the bottom as well. Wipe away the extra glue, you don't need that. And just continue that process all the way around. We'll take another a long side. Make sure the end of the short side goes on the long side, not the other way around. A little bit of glue on the long side. Line up the top, make sure it's flush and smooth on both edges, the top side and the outside. Nail it. Line up the bottom smooth and flush. Nail it. Then you can set your piece upright. Take your other uh, short board. Put it on the end of the long boards, glue and nail it. Just make sure the top edges and the outside edges are flush. Same with the bottom. So what you should end, should end up with, a box the same size as an 8 frame hive. If you have it, use a square. Check it for square. If it's not square, square it. And you're going to set it to the side and let that glue set up in the squared position. So that's square right there. That's square, so what we'll do is we'll take our hands off of it. We're going to come back in about an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, so that glue has had time to set, and then it'll be ready to work on. We don't want to move it until it's dried in its square position. We'll start the video again when that's done. All right, now that your glue is dried, it's square, it's not going to go anywhere. Your next step is to get half inch hardware cloth. Uh, we use half inch because bees can crawl through it easily without scrubbing their wings. If you have 3 8 inch hardware cloth on hand, you can use it, but again, it's tight squeeze for the bees and it does rub their wings and cause them some wear, uh, which you don't want in the winter time. You want those bees to live as long as possible so you have a healthy hive in the spring. Uh, plenty of foragers uh, to go out and collect pollen so the queen can start laying. So use half inch hardware cloth. Uh, you just cut it one inch wider and longer, or pardon me, two inches wider or long and longer than the inside dimensions of whatever box you've built. Um, uh, that'll give you a one inch lip all the way around to attach this to. Then you just take it, fit it down inside the box. I leave about a quarter to a half inch gap between the bottom of the box and the bottom of the screen wire. This is because when you put sugar in this, it's going to droop a little bit from the weight and you really don't want that. Um, so it gives you some space in there uh, to prevent that from happening. So this is what you should end up with. 
You've got half inch hardware cloth inside a box. Then you just press the inside all the way around to make sure it's flush. And then you're going to take a stapler and staple this all the way around uh, to hold it in place. It doesn't need a whole bunch, maybe every three or four inches. And all I'm doing is catching one of the wires with the staples as I staple it. There you have it. Stapled in, screen's not going to go anywhere. Next step is to cut yourself a couple of chimney molds. Uh, we're going to do that from pieces of 2x4. All you need is a piece of 2x4, uh, 3 inches long. And you'll put those in the corners before you pack your sugar in. That way there's, and then after you pack your sugar in, you take those form molds, those chimney molds out, and what you've got then is a space with no sugar, the shape of a 2x4 in each corner to allow the hive to ventilate so moisture can get up and out and also uh, for the bees to, uh, to have an entrance kind of like crawl up and get on the sugar without having to chew in it through the bottom, which of course is perfectly fine. And then the step after that is to cut us a couple of shims to put under this, uh, uh, 3 8 inch shims. Uh, we're gonna build, uh, make two of those. And what you do with those is you put them on top of your frames on the top of your hive, and then you place this on top of that and those shims will, again, help even further reinforce the strength of this screen mesh and keep it from the weight collapsing it down onto the top of your frames and your bees not being able to get across the top of your frames. So let's go ahead and cut two of those chimney molds and our two shims and we'll be done. So what we've got here is the candy board feeder, okay, with half inch wire mesh, two 3 8 inch thick shims. These will go on top of your frames and then this will be placed on top. The shims hold this screen off the top of your frames so that the bees can easily move between the frames inside the hive and access all areas of the sugar. And the last piece are two chimney molds. These can really be any size as long as they're a few inches wide. And what you'll do is when you go to make your candy, you'll take this mold and you'll put it in the corner like so. And you'll do that in both corners. And then you pack your sugar in. After you pack your sugar in, you remove these two molds and what you have are two empty spaces in these two corners that allow a chimney effect to take place so that moisture and heat, uh, or not heat, but so that moisture can wick out of the hive. Um, the sugar actually does a good job of soaking up most of the moisture uh, that the bees produce, but I personally use a double screened inner cover on top of this. So I'll put a double screened inner cover on this and then I'll put an empty honey super on top of that and fill that with sawdust. It adds excellent insulation at the top of the hive, plus it adds a huge sponge to soak up all the moisture from the bees respirating all winter inside the hive and keeps it nice and dry. So that's this project. Uh, again, you can get these for sale on our website if you don't have the materials or tools to make them. Just visit funnybugbees.com. As always, there's a coupon code for 10% off right here of this particular product. 
Uh, if you have any questions, please post in the comments below. And if you watched this video and you thought it was useful, please like and subscribe. I'll talk to you next time.